Take a deep breath. Relax yourselves. Body and mind. Resting naturally. In the openness of this moment, the ingraspability of this moment, the all embracing, all inclusiveness that is innate to this moment, where all sounds and thoughts and feelings, all sensations and manners of perception are naturally held, naturally included. Everything already rests naturally in the state of this moment. Nobody's going to do anything about that. It's just the nature of what is. Meditation without understanding is still useful, but not nearly as useful as meditation with understanding. And what is the understanding? The understanding is the knowing of what is self versus what is not self. Just because we experience a thing doesn't mean that thing defines the self or our self. Just because we feel a certain way doesn't mean that that feeling is us. Just because we're used to having certain branches of thought, certain pathways of thinking, certain grooves of mind, doesn't mean that any of that equals yourself. And it's this classic inquiry of what is self, who am I, what is I. We seem to carry it around all day long, every day, for all our lives. This inner sense of me. It's always in the background. almost as if hiding from view, yet palpably there as our main reference point for all else that we experience. It is the point in which all of our perceptions and memories and decisions come together. You are the root of all your memories. You're not any one of your memories. And perhaps you're also not the entirety of your memories. But you are. That much we can say for sure. No one can deny their own existence. Because even the denial of your own existence would only confirm that you exist, that you be there to deny your own existence. So then meditate with the understanding that what is self, what is me, what is I, pick your favorite word, what is itself 
does not equate, does not equal any single one of your experiences. And if we break down the nature of our experiences, we could roughly conclude that all our experiences are generated or consist of either one of the five senses, a perception of smell, sound, visual imagery, whether imagined by the mind, through memory and symbolization, or whether actually through our physical eyes perceived in that moment with no memory. Tactile sensations, the feeling of the body and so forth. Taste. The five senses that we are familiar with determine or constitute at least our experience of the physical world, of our physical selves, of our physical, perhaps not selves. But like I said earlier in the other session, Through which of the senses, by which of the senses, do you know I am or I exist? Which of these five senses is responsible for your ability to know that you are? Look if you can find self-knowledge in any of the senses and what they produce or perceive. Hearing a sound, is that self-knowledge? Is that awareness? Seeing the world looking at a picture, seeing others, is that awareness? <clears throat> then in addition to the five senses, We could say what furthermore constitutes our perceptions is the mind, thoughts, and their emotional consequences. The ability to interpret and attribute meaning and so forth. The ability to tune into something, to have thoughts about something. So we have the five senses. And then we have that subtler sense, if you will, called the mind. Thoughts. But if you look at your thoughts, almost as if they were subtle things, like little wisps of clouds in the sky. Subtle little packets of energy, perhaps, of electricity that produce an image, a memory, an understanding or an insight. And if you look intently at a thought and you wonder if it is by the power of that thought that you know that you are. 
do I know that I am because of this thought? Or, do I know that I am with or without that thought? And if so, is my self-awareness essentially independent from the mind, the thinker, the thoughts? And if so, do I then not have the privilege and the ability to rest naturally in an awareness of myself without needing to rely on the thoughts, on the memories, on the emotions, or on any of the senses. Do I not have that ability to rest naturally in the knowledge that I am. Do I really need the senses? Or do I really need to think in order to know that I am? Or can I simply know that I am directly? As if from within a domain all its own. As if from a space prior to the observation of my thoughts and my feelings and my senses. And must it not be so, given the fact that I can remember the different portions and eras of my life? For must not all that knowledge, all that information, come together somewhere? Must it not be known by me in order for me to remember anything, to know about anything? Must I not first exist, be there, before I can have perception? Must I not first exist? prior to experiences. For I do not know anyone who has ever experienced something without first existing or being there. Therefore it is because I am that I know my thoughts. It is because I am that I know my feelings. It is because I am that I can remember certain portions and scenarios of what I've experienced before. All of that is coming together in me, in that innermost reality of existing and however much my mind would like to put a label on what that is however much my senses would like to define it as something that they can categorize as belonging to smell or sound or sight or sensation every single attempt to define or conclude or label the very fact that I exist falls short entirely. And yet, the fact that I be, that I am, is indisputable in my direct experience of anything. So then what is me and what is not me? Meditate on this inquiry. I am aware of my senses. Therefore, I is not the senses. Me is not the senses. 
I am is not the senses. I am aware of my thoughts, therefore I am not my thoughts. And therefore thoughts can never grasp what I am. And where does that leave you when it comes to wanting to know what you are. It leaves you only with the direct experience of being. The only way to familiarize yourself with yourself as distinct from all that is not self, your only hope is that direct experience prior to thinking about it. It is because you are that you hear my voice and the frogs and the fans. All of that depends on you being. This being has no form. That's why it doesn't belong to the domain of the senses or the mind, which are all form-based, form-driven, form-producing. But all form confirms your existence as prior to form, as free of having a form, yet indisputably, inescapably present. None can deny their own existence. All we can do is misassociate this existence with one or more of the appearances that we know of, the perceptions that we experience. But fundamentally, you are not what you perceive. I am nothing but I am. I am nothing but I am. I am nothing but I am. Only the I am can know the I am directly. The senses cannot know the I am. The thoughts cannot know being. Only being knows being. Only awareness can watch awareness. Thoughts cannot observe awareness. Only awareness can observe awareness. So simply be aware of your awareness without attributing any form to it, just letting it be exactly as it is, simple, pure, formless, ever-present awareness. That awareness is, that awareness is I am, that I am is aware. Just like water is wet, being is awake, inseparable. You cannot separate wetness from water. You cannot separate awareness from
from being or being from awareness. Two sides of the same exact thing, not even sides. Undifferentiated. And you can try not to be aware and see if it works. You can try not to exist and see if it works. You can try to stop being and see if it works. But you're still hearing my voice, even if you're not paying attention to it. It's still getting registered. It's beyond doing. It's beyond accepting or rejecting. It's beyond preference, beyond bias, beyond personalized ideas and convictions. Every one has different convictions, but every one is. And that isness is aware. Stay subtler than the mind. Abide, abide prior to your thoughts, prior to assumptions, in that consciousness, that beingness. that which is always with you, not only sometimes, that which always is. And just watch yourself being aware without adding anything, without assuming anything, just observing that you are already ongoingly being aware. Resting naturally in that awareness. Being that awareness. Aware of itself. You still exist without thoughts. Trust that eternal state of I am.
and realize perhaps that this I am is not in your possession, that this I am is universally free beyond anyone's reach or grasp. It is the nature of the universe. It is in that sense universal, the essence of life itself. So when you notice the I am, in direct experience, realize that it's not your I am. Perhaps there is no your, for does that not depend on thoughts? And can thoughts ever reach or grasp the self or the I am? Perhaps if we let go of our sense of possessiveness and just allow the I am to be universal, perhaps then we begin to know God.